In this clip, Advocate Indra Jai Singh, while speaking at Money Life Foundation's third annual RTI lecture, explains the opaque process in which judges are appointed to their positions. She touches upon the impact of former Chief Justice of India M. N. Venkatachalya when he transferred nearly 50 judges to displace nepotism and dynasty in the judiciary. Whether the judiciary delivers on its promise or not depends on the people who get appointed as judges. Who makes these appointments? It was during the period of his tenure as former CJI that the Supreme Court made a tectonic shift from judges being appointed primarily by the President of India with the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers to judges being appointed by the judiciary in consultation with the Prime Minister, no doubt. This happened 12 years after a bench of seven judges of the Supreme Court had decided in the S.P. Gupta case that the executive would have unlimited powers to appoint judges. Justice Venkat Chalaya therefore played a very important role in the development of the journey of appointment of judges. Although he was not a part of that bench, it fell upon his shoulders to make appointments of judges. Many years later, the Supreme Court decided that not just the Chief Justice alone, but a collegium of the Chief together with the four senior most judges would make appointments to judges of the Supreme Court and three senior most judges would make appointments to the high courts. To Justice Venkat Chalaya's credit, he made transfers of no less than 50 judges to different high courts on the ground that they had their own relatives practicing in those courts. It was perhaps the first attempt to get rid of dynasty and nepotism in the judiciary.